Okay, so here's the BVM. Um, this is an initial inspection before any work is done just to have an accurate baseline of where everything is. So I'm in 240p test suite. You can see on the plunge test the brightness is clearly cranked out to the max. You've got gray black levels. You can see the blue bars on the sides which should be in invisible. Um, and then the color bars test you can see the colors crank out way past uh, the zero mark. Which I think I can scroll over somehow here. Let's see. I forget how you do that. It may not work on this one. Alright, forget it. Color bars again, you can see that down here it's cranked. You can see all three contrast bars. Um, geometry, you can see. Let me zoom out here. Right here where my finger is is the edge of the screen. So you got about a half inch to three quarter inch gap on the left. Got a half inch gap on the bottom. Got a quarter inch gap on the right. Got a mm, possibly the yoke isn't straight. We have a color issue in the corner that just seems to be degaussed out probably. Uh, we got a little bit of a pin cushion issue on the top where the top sides bend inwards. Um, let's see. Here's a close up of that bending. Um, looks like we probably have some convergence issues on the road. Yeah, yeah we do. Um, if you look closely here at that blue where the blue meets the green you can see that they're overlapping. Blue overlaps white and red. If you look over here they meet you know they meet normally. There's minimal overlap. Looks like green has some overlap there. So yeah we, we've definitely got some convergence problems. If you look up up here where white meets blue you can see the white beams wider than the blue beam greens wider than blue yeah so there's some issues here beyond just capacitor issues now I'm trying to see the jitter um, Yeah, I see it. Oh yeah. Almost looks like the screen's shaking. I don't know if you could see that on the camera. Let me point it at the corner here. I hope it's picking that up, but I can see it very clearly. It's like jumping up and down. It almost looks like the thing is on a table that's shaking, you know, except the screen's not moving at all. I mean, the the case isn't moving at all and the screen's moving like it's being shaken. So yeah, there's the jitter issues. So, then the last issue to document isn't actually an issue with the adjustments, it's just an issue with the... Um, software on the BVM. If you go to the menu, which this is a bad screen to be doing that on. Let me get on a darker screen. Let's zoom out. So if we go to the menu and then we go to status, I believe. Ah, yes. Here you go. So this is the correct model number. The serial number is just blank. It's just the first number is correct. Everything else is blanked out to zeros. That's not correct. Operation time is zero hours. So it's not keeping track of hour counts. Because um, I think that there's an internal battery that's dead. Because if I turn the monitor off and turn it on, 
you'll see that it's completely lost the settings that it was just on. Like, I have to do the sync again. Um, but at least it remembered RGB mode, so maybe that's just the way the control deck works. But if I turn the monitor off in the back, you know, if I cut power to the inside, take it out of standby mode. So I just flip the switch on the back, flip it back on. Standby lights flashing, monitors coming on, it's doing its auto power on. Okay, it did remember it still, so I'm wondering if it has to be unplugged for a certain amount of time for that to happen. I really don't know the exact cause of the issues. I just know that I left it alone for a while and came back to it and it had forgotten all of my input configurations. Let's see if it still is in RGB mode when it comes in. Yeah, so I, I guess it just has to be unplugged for a little while. I'm not sure what's going on there, but that is the uh, full extent of all the issues that I was able to document. This is pre-repair, so we'll be comparing this to uh, post-repair to see mostly if the jitter is fixed. That's what we're targeting. All right, so we're going to disassemble this thing, starting with the two top case screws. to take the top off just like the hood of a car <laughs> pretty quick um, and so there is that beefy fucking BVM 20 inch tube um, and so let's get the sides off next This is interesting. It looks like someone has done their own uh, warranty sticker in here. <laughs> A little weird. So someone named Fox was in here in uh, October, on October 11 of 2011 and uh, wants everyone to know it. It's a little strange and now I'm a little bit concerned on what he was doing in here. But uh, I guess we'll find out once we get deeper. Okay, let's take off this panel as well. Yeah, some of them's definitely been in this thing and they were pretty fucking careless with it. The screws are messed up. Like they were using the wrong size screwdriver. Which is pretty sad since these are literally just Phillips number two screws. I mean, come on. So the two boards that we're going to be targeting one at a time is the D board, which is the deflection board, and the BK board, which is the video signal processing board. So the D board is actually a perpendicularly mounted uh, module that plugs into the E board, which is the vertical deflection board. Um, this is like the horizontal deflection. 
and then the BK board is right here. It's the one that has the main analog RGB inputs for this model, uh, BVM. So when we look at the actual BVM here, that means we're looking at taking out this board. That's the BK board. And we're looking at taking out the deflection board. Specifically though, we want that little circuit board that, that plugs in right there. You can see, if I turn on my light, see, you can see that it just plugs in and it's got some capacitors on it that we're gonna be replacing. Let's take out these screws. These BVMs are basically the culmination of Sony fixing everything that was ever wrong with a PVM. The screws are self, they, they stay in to the, you know, you can't lose any screws. Each side of the case comes off as one piece instead of a giant stupid shell. <laughs> They've reinforced the inside. They've modularized, modularized every function of the boards that they can. Looks like this guy's been uh, dropped. It's bent right here. Um, the other side is not bent, so it's just that side that's bent. That's interesting. You can really see it if you follow the gap right here. It's wide and then it gets squeezed in and there's like a divot right here. Yeah. Anyways. <coughs> So let's pull out the deflection board and the beauty of these BVMs is how literally everything just goes into them like a computer card. It's all just modular so you just pull these right out. You can see here that it's got these pinned connectors and that's how it connects these boards to all the other boards. So then we can just pull out this connector like so, I just pulled it out from right there. And then this board is free to be removed and worked on. Really all we care about is this one. until they break free. So here we have three connectors that need to be removed. There's a black, a white, and a red. They actually represent red, green, and blue respectively. Each of these heat sink banks of ICs are all for the three colors that the monitor processes. There's also um, another connector down there on the bottom that I'm about to pull out. Once you pull those, this baby comes straight out. You can see that this is the BK board. It does have some electrolytic radial capacitors, but mostly the ones that are going to give us trouble are these little SMD capacitors. Um, it's really the reason I don't like working on BBMs is because they're new enough that SMD capacitors were uh, pretty commonly used and you know they they will fail just as much as a, a regular electrolytic but they're way more annoying to replace because they're they don't have pins that go through the board they're surface mount um, so it's just you know more annoying is all but yeah okay so we're gonna pull this D board off. What the fuck? That's weird. I'm going to show you something in a second as soon as I get this out. 
I think I may have just found evidence of previous repair. Could also be something that Sony did, I don't know. Oh, there we go, Jesus. Okay. So, there is that board, and let's flip it over. <laughs> Look at that. If the camera would focus, let's see. Let me tell it to focus. There we go. So we have a radial capacitor soldered to an S the SMD pads and glued to the side of the board. And it's such a large capacitor, I bet it's like 160 volts. Let's see. Do, do, do. 105C. I can't. The side with the capacitor or the voltage reading is. Oh, it's a really high UF. It's a 15 volt, 1000 UF capacitor. So, um, yeah, I don't know who did that. I don't know if that was this Fox guy that's been in here already or what, but it's considering the fact that it's glued with this like factory looking paste, I'm assuming it was a Sony job. Just the work looks so bad. Like it's got dried flux around the, the pads and I, <laughs> I don't know. Anyways. Let's see, that is C301, which let's see if that's part of my cap kit. Nope, we're going to be leaving that one alone. I uh, went ahead and ordered my cap kits from uh, Save on Pat on eBay whenever there's a cap kit available from him, I just go with his because he's already been doing these repairs for years and years and there's no sense in, in not starting with what he believes to be the most commonly failing capacitors on these boards. You know, if you do his cap kit and your problem, your capacitor related problem still isn't solved, then you, you know you have a pretty unique problem on your hands. Okay, there is the first of many new capacitors to go on this deflection board. I'm gonna go ahead and do the rest of them off camera um, just because it's pretty time consuming. But I will show you uh, when I'm done. So I am midway through replacing these D-board capacitors and I just wanted to pause for a second and show you guys two things. First thing is every capacitor I've removed so far has definitely been leaking. You can see there's like residue on the pads under the capacitor and around it that's orange colored that is the electrolytic fluid leaking out the bottom of this capacitors now the other thing I wanted to show you is this capacitor right here C109 I did not install that capacitor that was already on here and look at it it is sideways it is leaking but more concerningly it's sideways and barely even has a connection there it's very poorly soldered so I don't know if that's a Sony job or if that's a previous repair job but I don't I don't like what I see there so anyways I'm gonna go back to uh, removing capacitors I just want to sh point that out to you guys all right, so the recap is finished. I, I replaced this group, this, these two, um, every ceramic capacitor on the, the horizontal deflection, um, and then also these two guys hiding behind it and this 160 volt cap up here. So I'm gonna plug just I'm gonna plug this back in without having recapped the BK board yet, and we're gonna reevaluate if we're still having um, jitter issues. All right, so I've installed the uh, recapped uh, deflection board and the original BK board without any uh, caps put on that one yet. And we're gonna turn on the BVM and see if we still have jittering in the picture.
Let's get a little bit closer here. Pretty stay to me. Hmm, okay, I'm going to let this warm up off camera and see if uh, it starts jittering over time or if this is really fixed just from that deflection board recap. Alright, well this baby's been warming up for uh, a little over half an hour now and the scan lines are still solid as a rock so it's definitely fixed. Um, the next thing I'd like to do is get the convergence uh, in order and also fix the screen brightness. I've, I've manually adjusted it with the control deck but you can see my changes there on the brightness and also on the contrast. If I turn them both off you start to see raster lines. Um, at least to my eye I do. You might not see it on the camera, but it's way too bright by default and has to be overridden by the control deck. That's the main problem and then also the convergence and uh, also with the convergence it's got some fuzzy corners um, but yeah it's mostly just like this kind of stuff like look at the green and the blue bleeding out of white vertically and then look at green and blue overlapping horizontally green and red overlap horizontally um, green and blue over like everything overlaps nothing's aligned properly and it's very noticeable when you're looking at a still image um, so anytime that that's really going to show up anytime you're playing a game with subtitles or any type of menus or text on the screen that doesn't move um, text is usually white and uh, anything white is going to look super blurry because of the blue and the green bleeding out of it um, so I definitely like to fix that but the owner of this BVM hasn't uh, given me the green light on uh, geometry and convergence fixes yet so uh, if he does then I will be sure to uh, show the results of that in, an, in a follow-up video but anyway this one's fixed and it's time to close up the uh, the case put the shell side shells back on and uh, move on to the next one